Thank you very much, Senator, and I want to thank Maria Wells for the hard work that she does. And you listen to all the committees and things she does, and she doesn't have any time to sell real estate back home. She also serves on our health advisory board and does a great job. And we have a debt, a great, a debt of gratitude for the work that you've done in, in bringing this. And the Florida is really operating on all cylinders, if you think about it. We should be very proud of the work. Division of Emergency Management, our lobbying corps, the Office of Insurance Regulation, the legislature, the executive branch, has really made a ma magnificent difference in where we are today in the Florida insurance market. But I would be remiss if I didn't start off by making my comments and giving my heartfelt thanks to Senator Brandis and the hard work that he's done. We would not be here today except for his leadership, and I want to thank you on behalf of the Florida citizens for what you've done. It's not just your leadership. It's not just your vision. I can tell you personally how the level of energy is just boundless, and he is perseverance, and he really never gives up, and we're really grateful for that commitment. And that commitment is very important given the challenges we have before us. You know, before I talk more about the flood market, I want to, I, I don't think we celebrate enough how successful Florida has been and how close we were on the precipice of disaster with 1.6 million policies and citizens and where we have come in just the last few years in the huge efforts to depopulate that. And it's a concerted effort of, of governor who has made Florida in a better place to do business, provided an environment where investors wanted to come to Florida, not primary investors, but also the reinsurance market. We see the huge transformation in the reinsurance market with a great deal of an infusion of capital, as the senator re referred to before, which is giving us an opportunity not only to bring strength in our domestic marketplace, our much maligned, thinly capitalized companies are now some of the strongest companies, are now providing relief for those states in the Northeast that have been hit with Hurricane Sandy or Superstorm Sandy, and much of the national companies are retreating. It's being filled by Florida-based and Florida indigenous companies who have been very successful in Florida and expanding across the globe, across the country. We have seen with this increase in the market capacity, not only that uh, rates have gone down for consumers in Florida, where we've seen rates go up, we're now seeing rates going down. We're seeing a combination and a real improvement in strengthening of our market. And as we addressed it, we addressed the sinkhole problem. We have problems we're going to see in the future. There's no question. As if you watched uh, uh, Barry Gilway testify, you'll see that we have a new emerging problem. We like to refer to it in Florida as whack-a-mole. As, as, as soon as you solve a problem one place, something pops up somewhere else. I don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, negative about our marketplace, but sometimes we have ingenious folks maybe in the, the legal profession or some unscrupulous public adjusters or that may uh, take advantage of our marketplace, but assignment of benefits is something we're gonna have to address. And we're gonna have to do what's necessary to uh, ensure that we have take the necessary legislative and regulatory steps to improve our market to keep that from becoming the new mold or the new uh, uh, sinkhole issue that we've experienced before. As, uh, as we look forward to the future, we know that Bigger Waters was an attempt to address a very serious problem with a $23 billion deficit in that program. And so Bigger Waters was an attempt to address a very serious problem. But we also know, as Maria said, how devastating some of those more onerous provisions were. It would have devastated the Florida economy, it would have devastated our real estate market, it would have made it impossible for people to sell their homes. And thanks to leadership of Senator Brandis, the leadership from coming from our collective community, including the Florida Realtors, Governor Scott, who also wrote letters, and our efforts, we're able to temper some of the more onerous provisions. And I really want to thank Congressman Ross for his leadership in Washington in fighting hard to get a bipartisan legislation to really open up the markets so that the private flood insurance can flourish and do business in Florida. He's, he's shoveling against the tide, but I know another man who is, who's, 
has a great deal of perseverance and commitment to this project. And I, I know he's working very closely with Congressman Murphy. And you know, in this very partisan time in Washington, it's critically important to do what we can to cobble together a bipartisan solution. And I know he's doing his level best to address those issues. And uh, we hopefully will work with Maria. There are a few issues that uh, language that we think is important. Um, we're uh, working with the National Association of Insurance Commissioners to provide language which we think would uh, remove some of those impediments, particularly as it relates to the potential for the federal government and federal agencies to weigh in on things like financial strength, solvency, and claims king capacity, which really is the purview of the states and should be the states that make those decisions on behalf of the policyholders. And uh, most recently, of course, I uh, sent a letter, as many of you know, to, uh, to our friends in Washington asking them for data. As has been pointed out uh, on the face, there's prima facie evidence that the rates are discriminatory. Florida is 37% of the premium, so I think uh, we have a right to this information so that we can use our collective resources at the Office of Insurance Regulation, working with our, our, our stakeholders in the insurance industry, modeling companies, so that we can get a better idea on appropriate pricing for policies in the future. I am encouraged, I did have an opportunity when I was in Washington to meet with um, Director Wright, the new uh, flood director, and I was very favorably impressed. Uh, we began his introduction with um, a representative from uh, uh, South Carolina, uh, Director Farmer, who has recently went through some horrible floods in South Carolina, as you are all keenly aware of in the news. And he was highly complimentary of the responsiveness and the innovation and the vision of, of the new flood program. And having gone through working with the flood program in hurricane season 2004, 2005, I can tell you they were not known for their innovation or their vision. So uh, I'm very encouraged by that. We've talked about getting the data. Um, and I don't think we're gonna get the, 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 the data to the level of granularity that I think we would like to have but I think it's going to be data that is going to be something that will be, will be able to um, generate and review and help develop rates in the future. Uh, we do have a commitment for him to work closely with our office. He understands the important role Florida plays in the federal flood, pro flood program, and we're certainly looking forward to working with him in the future, and, and I'm, I'm very much encouraged by that. In closing, I'd like to thank all of the thought leaders in this room. Uh, I, I, I know that a lot, oftentimes in the past, Florida has been maligned as a place where it was a systemic threat, that Florida was not a problem solver, but really created a problem. But the truth of the matter is, is through years of hard work, innovation, creativity, working with investors around the world, working with the innovation coming from Bermuda and elsewhere, we were able to create a marketplace that now has really changed dramatically the landscape in Florida. I recently came back from a meeting with the Florida Latin Agents Association in Miami and talked to a friend of mine who I did her induction ceremony as president seven years ago. And she said at that time she had two markets, citizens and one market, that market was writing a maybe five or six policies a month in Florida. Today, she has 14 markets in Miami-Dade. That's amazing. And, it's, and, it's, and, and the fact of the matter is, there are more entrants to the market, there are more opportunities. Yes, we still have challenges. We certainly have to deal with the assignment of benefits issue. We have to deal with low-valued homes, and some of the Monroe County continues to be a challenge. But the fact of the matter is, we are in strong positions, our companies are strong, they're in a position to paying claims, rates are going down, and there's plenty of capacity in the reinsurance market to help fund a, a private flood program that'll benefit not only Floridians, but the country. Thank you for the opportunity to be here, and I look forward to learning from this session. 
and joining you in revitalizing the flood marketplace in Florida.